interesting because there's been this story, which at some point was called a conspiracy, that South Africa is listed as a, as a company in America. But we're actually a company. We're actually working for Americans. This is The Hustlers Corner. Hey, good afternoon, squatters. Good afternoon, hustlers, brothers and sisters from all over the world. Welcome back to Virtual Mkuku, episode 12, happening on the Hustlers Corner podcast. As usual, we go straight to that sharp, sharp sign on the count of one, two, three, that like button. Let's go click, 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 click that. And then let's go to that subscription button so the community grows. Click that. And let's not forget to switch on the notification bell. It's good to be back. How are you doing, my brother? Buddha. I'm Kumbulil. I'm fit. Yo, fit. Uh, I guess what uh, some of the squatters won't know is our shooting schedules. Uh, so I haven't seen you in a few days. It feels like forever because we work so, so much together now. And uh, it's a blessing and a curse for me personally because because manja wants to be not DJ Sbu, they think I live inside your house. And <laughs> except for manja Sbu, it, 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 I mean I don't know. I just work with the guy, so um, it's been quite a blessing and fascinating. But uh, I'm happy to see you again. Yeah, now I mean, it feels good to be back. I mean, the last time we, I think I actually lost, last saw you at the farm. It might be the farm. Yeah. It might be the farm. Uh, yo, you're reminding me of the interview with Pumi Lialika, which was amazing. That was absolutely, dope. absolutely amazing. I. I got a lot of feedback, mixed reactions, but I enjoyed it because it shows that our, our virtual squatters, as expected, are highly intelligent people. So I was happy. I was happy with the interview. I was happy to meet Likau. I saw some of the comments. I want to be successful. So I'm also taking it rip. Um, I was inspired more Same than yeah. anything. Resilience, the ability to fall down, get back up. 16 years of failed businesses, failing matric. I was like, this is the story. Regardless of what happens, Regardless of what happens, uh, I'm inspired and I hope everyone else is inspired. I always say the same thing too and I sometimes see people expecting certain entrepreneurs to be amazing when it comes to um, business jargon or explaining certain things or and if you don't turn to speak like that, maybe to some people it feels like you're either not that um, authentic, authentic or genuine of an entrepreneur mm -hmm. Not every entrepreneur has gone to business school. Mm -hmm. Not every entrepreneur will understand business. Yes. We learn as we go. Yes. We all never, we were never born necessarily entrepreneurs, but as we keep, you know, figure this, figuring this life thing as we go, sure. we keep creating our own parts. And when we share our stories, sometimes the way Likau or myself or, or you will share your story is different from how a Harvard graduate of course. Or an MBA would share their story. Of course. You know, an MBA would be easily believable. They use the right jargon. Of course. They went to school, they're believable. And uh, a Peño will have to now be forced to go do a video on his YouTube to tell people, I've sold sweets, I've had a pass a shop, I've had a fish and you must now prove yourself on that level. Sure. Ugutu, you qualify enough to be called an entrepreneur. Sure. But that's a sad thing, but that's the world we're living in, you know. Our virtual squatters need to wisen up. The whole point of this platform, Umkukuetu, is so that we can educate each other. And part of it is understanding that business is a system and you are just one part of the system. And understanding that, guys, it takes time. It takes time to get to the jargon and the understanding and the whatever. You won't always know your numbers off by heart. You may not even deal with margins because you're like, guys, I'm actually the creative. I don't deal with the numbers. There's someone that does that. Or I don't deal with something else in the business. Manje... Of course, because so dark and because I think in this country we're still relatively new in this business thing. And we almost want every success story to be what we wanted of Nelson Mandela. We wanted Nelson to go to jail for 30 years. We wanted him to come out. We wanted the world to love us. We wanted to build a great economy. It's too much for one man and especially an old man. So all of us, it's just how far are you in this journey of this nation we're trying to build? And what have you done with the pattern that you've been given? How far have you run? Manje, to expect us to do everything, which we can do, it's been proven. We've got the examples. But uh, we, we do have to be a bit more sensitive. And this is a note to myself as well. I do ask the questions because you might have the answers. But even if you don't have the answers, it's fine for me. Because whatever you can give me, I'll learn. Whatever you don't know, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, but let me say, I had a great time at the farm as well. Jeez. I was really inspired by Historiska Likau. It's not the first time I hear it. 
but it was really beautiful, my brother. And I love his mm. attitude. Very humble brother. Yes. And the reason I'm still speaking about Lakao is because the same track suit track suits he was wearing at the at the farm I'm wearing today. Because I asked him where he got them and I was shocked to find out it's actually a local brand. Yeah, I remember you spoke about it. Yeah. I remember you spoke about it. It looks how, how high, do, how, high quality. How dope is this? High bro? quality. It's so it is, bro. Like, nice and thick. It's like it's it's called Namanje. Guys, go check them out on social media. Go search them. They are called Namanje. I bought myself two track suits. So yeah. thanks to Lukao as the plug. Let's all support each other. We're keeping it local. So yeah, I just wanted to give e Namanje a plug. From my side, uh, on behalf of the virtual squatters, thank you for all the work you do to promote local brands. I'm not you. Yeah. People need to understand. I'm so smooth, uh, I'm highly inspired, of course, and I learn a lot from you. But on behalf of every kid out there, because I see your comments, I get people DMing me, like, hey, can you connect me with this mood? The work you've done to promote local entrepreneurs, and Uli Kao said it. I know Ntlantla Lux, when he was here, he said it. So many people pay homage to what you have done for people for, for free. For free. And not just for free, you actually buy from these people. And then you still promote their brands. And Spuda, for that, please keep it going. Keep Thank it going. You. And. Um, Hopefully, it will ignite others to do the same as Ulikao did, promoting someone else, even though he's already got his brand. Thank you, well. brother. Thank you. I think before we start today, let me give you a book. Thank you to put Velim Bele. Would like for you to come back again. When you came, um, Peñol wasn't here. He <laughs> was busy. And some of the squatters out there who love Peñol so much, when he's not here on some episodes, <laughs> guys, don't come at me, you know? See, sometimes he's busy. He's a businessman. He's got other things to do. So sometimes our schedule don't connect. And then we end up um, not being able to film together. But some episodes obviously have, have to happen for The Hustler's Corner. Fact. As it's always been um, since its inception. Yeah. I do episodes with guests. And I don't want us to mess up that DNA. Because I do know there is day oneers of The Hustler's Corner. People who followed us when it wasn't fashionable to do so. When the podcast started in 2019. So we don't want to uh, um, disrespect you guys. All of a sudden, since the reason why you fell in love with this podcast, maybe it's because of a certain um, way of how we do things. So don't worry. Those interviews will still happen. As I've already told you guys, we drop episodes Mondays, 12 o'clock, Wednesday, 12 o'clock, Fridays, 12 o'clock. But on Mondays, it's definitely me and this man. We can either have a guest here or two or however many, yeah. but definitely every Monday, it's me and Peñol the Black Pen. So on Friday, we interviewed Mr. Velim Pele, an amazing essayist who's a Pan-African, and he was so looking forward to meeting you. He thought you would be Me? Here. Yeah. Jeez. He actually even brought you a book. So he brought us two books. The first book is the Patrice Lumumba uh, by Georges Nzongola Talaja, a, a Jakana project. This is the Patrice Lumumba biography. Yes. It's a pocket book, easy to read. You can finish this up in one day. I finished it already. And then this, the Thomas Sankara Speaks. Nkunz Malanga. So he said I must give you the Thomas Sankara Speaks. Nkunz Malanga. Nyawaga Kulu. Thank you so much to Ubaba. Um, Velimpele. Ubaba Velimpele. I have a, I'm a huge fan of Thomas Sankara. Um, I, I stand to be corrected, but I believe our own Patrice Mutsipe was named after Patrice Lumumba. Lumumba, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. With Thomas Sankara, I've, I've actually done a summary. Maybe I'll post it on some of my platforms. Very short summary of some of the big things that he did in uh, Burkina Faso, the land of the upright man, and how normal people out there, virtual squatters, uh, maybe I'll put in the comments in this, how you can, in your own way, in your own world, lead like Usankara. The guy was way ahead of his time. Um, sadly, as much as I admire Thomas Sankara, I also have to learn from how he ended up being killed you know and we still have a, a, a lot of issues especially as let me speak about black south africans in particular we have a lot of psychological issues that are a legacy of colonization that are a legacy of poverty within the capitalist system um, jealousy wanting to be the only black being used as a puppet etc etc and he's an example chris Hani, the late chris Hani is an example bantu bigo is an example mangaliso sobugo etc etc of Black people that were fighting for Abant Abam Nyama. And to this day, they've died. They left great legacies. But I look at Abant Abam Nyama and I'm like, why are you not buying from Abant Abam Nyama? Why are you not working for Abant Abam Nyama? Because you claim to stand for these people, Thomas Sankara. But then you, you go and you do the things that they were fighting against. They were, Futinje, Sankara himself was very much about self-sufficiency. 
doing for self, growing trees, woman empowerment, uh, health. He believed in sports. And he was a student of Sheikh Wavara. We had Andy Lemnitama that was here speaking about being a bigoist. Um, bigoist. They spoke about Sheikh Wavara, Ernesto, Ernesto Guevara de la Serna. They spoke about uh, Thomas Sankara, these guys who were servant leaders, who are not there to be rich on their own. And people have just lost that. People are not servants in their own lives. You admire this guy, but you're not a servant. You work for a government department, but you're not a servant of the people. You're not a servant. And uh, I'm inspired and I'm looking forward to this. Again, I hope I, hope I will meet him soon. We definitely got to thank him in person. Him. One of our amazing bright minds in the country. And talking about um, the late, great Dr. Stephen Bantubiko, I've had the pleasure of flying down to the Eastern Cape to go visit some of my clients. Shout out to all the different spas that are now stalking Mofa in the Eastern Cape region. Abu Jumbo Cash and Carry and the different Cash and Carries and wholesalers that are our Mofa clients in the Eastern Cape. Thank you for having our brand there. And while I was there, I've taken some time to go to um, the late, great Stephen Bantubiko's home. And I also went to the um, Stephen Bantubiko Museum mm. at a township called Ginsburg. Mm. Um, Ginsburg is in the Eastern Cape, not far from King's William, or King Williamstown. Um, and basically that's where, if you want to know the history of Stephen Bantubiko, what he stood for, who he was, how his death impacted the whole world, even black African Americans from all over the world, and uh, beautiful, beautiful, amazing, um, teachable institution. Let me not call it an institution, maybe let me say, it's a beautiful teachable moment to go there and spend an hour or two mm -hmm. and let them take you around that museum and just learn about the history of the late great Steve Biko. So I've ha I have read the, uh, the memoirs that I write what I like and just mm -hmm. me going down in, in his neighborhood where he grew up and just being with the community members and also just seeing how sad as it is, I know it's a whole country, but just how rife poverty is in the Eastern Cape, it yes. hurts. It really hurts yes. my brother. It hurts. But, um, but I went there and I was like, you know, thank you for your contributions. Your ideas are alive. We're doing our own thing right now. It was as if Nkuluma ne netuna lake. It was as if... Yes. That was there. It was as if Nzobi came to Nemtala. Yes. My ideas. Sese ya enza manje. Yes. Uguti nati lapesi yoktu inakona. Si luliseli peiti nguabanyi. Who will then eventually probably take us to the promised land, you know? The greatest weapon in the mind of the oppressed. Or the greatest weapon. Or the greatest tool in the hands of the oppressed is the mind. But basically he was saying, Wuti, the oppressor's biggest weapon is owning and colonizing our minds. Um, and as I said earlier, these people took the baton at some point and then they got it to a certain level. Uh, firstly, I'd like to send a shout out to you. I know some people have criticized, which, ah, you can't keep sending a shout out to Usbu. I have to. I have to keep sending a shout out to you because I've been a fan of yours for many years. A lot of us are fans of yours. Uh, a lot of us have learned from you. Jobu Shud now Nedros Lako. Now we will close later to our living ancestor. <laughs> so uh, shout out to Imo Fire for the work that you guys have done at Spa. I hope the kids out there, just like all Likao and them, are gonna see that and be inspired and wanna work with you. Um, secondly, uh, Bantu Bigo passed away at a young age. I think he was in his thirties. Yeah, early thirties. You know, um, General Bantu Olomisa uh, was was running a chunk of the Eastern Cape in his early 30s as well. Tupac Shakur was uh, shaking the whole world uh, because he passed away at age 25. So yeah. it was between age 21 and 25. People need to understand that young people run the world. We heard my year too. Uh, I'm 36, so I'm not really, really young. There are kids that are 19, 20 that we're going to be looking to to take us to the next level because not we can only do so much. Um, so shout out to young people and shout out to our ancestors past and living, not just blood, but people that have shown us what we need to do and what they've done and the blood that they've spilt for us to, we have to, have to, have to, have to fight harder. Um, the first thing I'd like for us to talk about is we had a beautiful episode by, and we invited um, PhD Dr. JJ Tabane. Yes. What an incredible, awesome episode. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. I'm saying his life story. No, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, just thinking, I just had a flashback of him on Ian say, hey, JJ, we are shit <laughs> And he, he didn't disappoint on that episode as well. He didn't disappoint. That's why I'm laughing. I'm like, yo, JJ, jeez. 
that episode happened and it put us in a position where us as a platform some people are starting to say you guys are playing around the political boundaries right yes. now do you guys have got a political agenda who are you who's funding this hustlers corner yeah it's like this podcast has been around since 2019 it's an educational platform yeah it's got no agendas you guys were even criticizing we're not even criticizing it's actually a good thing you guys were calling us out two weeks ago and say how Subu, you don't even have a mic <laughs> <laughs> and we've listened we'll make sure that is sorted out sure. <laughs> you know so it's a platform we, we're sort of growing gang, 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 gang. we don't want to be in fights we're not a controversial platform we don't want to be um promoting gossip or negativity we're just here to promote positivity to promote inspirational stories to create dialogues mm. that get to stimulate minds out there to find out ways on how we can collaborate work together to learn from one another learn from our guests etc it's literally a, po a positive positive platform but anyway it so happened that when he came here I was not even aware that uh, Dr. JJ was a part of COPE in his Same. serious life. Same. It happened in the middle of the interview while sure. he was telling us a story that at some point he digressed to um, wanting to go start a political party with some of his partners, thinking they were going to topple off the ANC. Mm. And that's when we started getting interested. Sure. And then we found out, what, COPE? Oh! Um, and uh, I'm, I'm breaking down the story for those who haven't watched it. Go check it out. The episode happened, I think, about three or four weeks ago with uh, Dr. JJ Dabane. What happened there is he ended up having to divulge information of how he and his partners started COPE. Sure. And our follow-up questions were, I think I personally asked a question that said uh, along the lines of, let me paraphrase, um, were there any other ANC leaders who were involved in the formation of COPE apart from the ones that we know, which would be Obab Mbazi Mashiloa, yes. Nobaba or Teral Kota? Yes. Uh, and then he did start mentioning different names. Sure. Him mentioning those names ended up getting us into um, headlines. I was not even aware because I haven't been on Twitter. I've been hacked, bro. Sure. I don't Jeez. have my Twitter back. Yeah. Somebody tried to hack me. I lost my phone. I had to do a SIM swap. I, I've literally been offline for almost two weeks. Right. We, we must touch on cybersecurity after after this. Yeah, I'd like. Yeah, for just us the to. dangers of social media and those things. Little did I know, you know, sure. our episode was being spoken about in the news. Mm. We we're on the Sunday Times. Apparently, we we're at seven o two. Yeah. I was, you, were you aware of all of that? Nami ngabo na ngabantu sebe ngtumela various things and then I was referred to SAPC news and I went on YouTube and I saw the clips and I was like, geez, okay. Um, I, I, I was excited initially. I was like, oh, okay, Hustlers Corner virtual mkuku, they showing, because JJ is a, is, a, is a big voice, especially politically. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So he's going to get his, to say his side of the story and they, they're using our clip. I was very disappointed to see that they didn't credit the Hustlers Corner. They didn't credit the virtual Mkuku. So that was disappointing for me. And I'm hoping in future they'll rectify that. Um, but I was excited. And then next thing I hear, I would know the issue is that uh, they have an issue with the certain things that he said there. And then at some point, we heard that there was going to be a potential lawsuit. Hey, Tiko, come on. Um... So I was invited on the Hustlers Corner weeks, months back. I don't know how long it's been. I feel like I've known you for years now. Hey, Joe, same here. <laughs> uh, I came with my own brand on social media. Um, you welcomed me. Uh, our crew at the back, Abu Justice, welcomed me, and I've been very appreciative. We, we've built our own separate entity, and we're looking to properly formalize it in time, the virtual Mkuku, of which I will be involved fully. Um, the Hustlers Corner is not mine. Ngafi is a guest and you guys invited me to stay for a bit and we'll create our own thing. That's why on the lawsuit you are not there. <laughs> it's, you, it's, also because I'm, it's also because I'm a nobody. I, it's also because I'm a nobody. I wanna, I wanna speak about I wanna speak about I wanted to speak about that as well. Sorry, continue. Kum, sure. ne <laughs> fire, so we have to go after them. Uh, so I I appreciate that even in your statement and your speaking, that you're speaking as uh, and I, I, I was just clarifying with you, they weren't suing you as with DJ Spoo. They were suing the platform and you are the representative. I'm not a representative. I'm, I'm more of a guest. Um, I have my own brand. I have my own views and they're quite controversial. And some of the guests that have come onto the virtual Mkuku have seen some of my other videos. That's why Andy Lemgitama wanted to argue with me, which I'm captured. 
That's why Coco Tineo was like, I mean, I've seen some of your stuff. I'm hoping it's also why Ubabu Mpele um, also wanted to engage with me and why he even gave me this book. Because he knows there are certain very strong views I have. I appreciate that you're speaking on behalf of the Hustlers Corner podcast. And people need to be able to distinguish. There's something called a platform. So the SAPC is a platform. ENCA, new, these are platforms. This is a platform. You may be the owner, you may be the main host, but it's a platform at the end of the day. And obviously, if anything happens here, you, you, you are responsible for it, but it's a platform. The virtual cook will be another platform. And then on top of these platforms, there are human beings. And these human beings, DJ Spoo is a big brand. You know, I'd like to think you are brand friendly. Any brand can work with you. You, you say the right things, you're politically correct, etc., etc. Mina, as a small, very small brand, I'm not brand friendly. I say very controversial things. And some of these politicians that you mentioned in your statement, I've got very strong opinions about them, which I've spoken about on my platforms. I've had to learn since I joined you guys that this is a platform, I'm a guest, and then also learning the culture, because every platform's got its own culture. I can't go into a Christian television program and then go there and swear and this and, I have to So now like uh, there's a culture and I had to learn. Part of it being, and the squatters did correct me, which panel give people a chance to chat. I saw they were, I saw they were poking with nota for the same thing with that. <laughs> doing the same thing with PenYNs. I learned with oh there's a culture here. And the culture is this is a platform for education. This is a platform for narrative. There's a great um, video on YouTube, uh, the uh, Future Brunch by Kanye West speak about black people owning their narratives. So this platform outside of mainstream was also meant to be so that people can come and tell their story. Doesn't matter who it is, can be a politician, can be a celebrity, it can be a rapper, it can be whoever it is. Come tell your story. And it's meant to be unbiased. This whole thing that's happening is, is sad for me. N not as someone who's here, as an outsider watching, but the whole point of social media and the internet or so that people could say things that they can't say on mainstream and if you guys are going to attack us now that means now we we can't be honest anyway i'm happy that to dr jj taban is fighting because again platform host he was a guest that was his opinion on a platform it's sad that the platform got dragged in because i think that's unfair but look, I understand these people are like, look, you guys should have verified whatever, which I don't necessarily think is actually really our job, but it's fine. See, I found that. Because we, we don't want to cause unnecessary tension. As a platform, we're not fighting with anyone. But we want people to comfortably come and speak their truth here. Because now what happens if people are getting bashed, especially by people with money, people with agendas? Other people be like, but I want to come and drop bombs, but in the edit, and keep. Any little bit of money, and YouTube doesn't pay much, guys. I hope you guys know, those of you that are on YouTube. YouTube doesn't pay much. So, and now we have to pay for legal things. Tina, the platform, it's, it's not right. I appreciate <laughs> that the biggest leaders in this country are watching this platform. I appreciate it. Outside of the virtual squatters, guys, because you must. We're speaking on behalf of the people that vote for you, that pay tax. So I appreciate that Abu Trevor Manuel are watching. That's, that's good. And it's not just him. I can imagine the conversations he had with many other big politicians locally and abroad. We appreciate it. But with that being said, guys, please listen to us. If you guys claim to believe in democracy, transparency, letting people lead, Go after whoever said something wrong. That, that is your right. We were wrong to say that. Please fix it. No, Smuda's like, no, I mean, I'm, I'm standing by what I said. Okay, I'm going to sue you because it's on a platform, it's out there. Why are we being attacked? And if they want to fight, it's fine. Tina's not happy. We want this space to be as comfortable as possible where I can say I am God. And Christians and Muslims can lose their whatever. And people can come here and speak about conspiracies and be like, I mean, I'm not sure about all COVID, no monkeypox. And we're like, this is a free space. I might have my views. DJ Spoo might have his views. Our virtual squatters might have their views. But you're a guest here. Mm. 
colega. So um, that saddened me. And I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, we will fix some of those things while we're learning and we will be more intelligent and strategic in how we move. Our squatters know that we're, we're relatively sharp gents. Yeah. Um, not just sharp gents, we've had a lot of, oh, shout out to the females that have been on this platform. Um, we're, we're, we're sharp people and we're gonna find ways to make sure that people still get the truth. And we're teachable. However people. it comes, and we're very teachable. We're not trying to hurt anyone. We're not trying to hurt anyone. And where people are wrong, even if a Dr. JJ Tabane is wrong, he must apologize. That's on him, but he must still tell his story freely. And with that being said, Mr. Trevor Manuel, you're more than welcome to come pay us a visit. Hey, come on. Tell him Mr. Trevor. Mweni, Mr. Mbazu Mashilowa, Mr. Teral Kota, Mr. Julius Malema. Who else? It would um, have been Mbuisen in has Mu been asked. Mr. Mbuisen in Ah, uh, Dr. Lazulu Shaba. Jeez. You know? Like we want, we want you guys here so that young people can watch and hear you guys' views and understand you guys better. You know, like when you watch a lot of our episodes, mm. doesn't matter whatever guess we have. Sure. You will see some comments that are saying, oh wow, I always thought this person was like this and this and that. After listening to this interview, now I understand. Complete change. On Andi, Mr. Andilem Mkritama, same thing. A lot of people were saying, wow, I actually never sat down to listen to Mr. Mkritama. Yeah. Now I understand his views. I understand yeah. where, he coming from, where he's coming from with his politics. Sure. Same with Sis Mandisa uh, um, Mashiko. Mashiko. Same even with all our, of our other guests who are not yes. necessarily uh, 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 politicians or, yes. or, or in politics, etc. So yeah, with that being said, I'm looking forward to having all these amazing um, people that we look up to sitting here. I'm glad and I hope that is out of the way. Uh, we're not a part of anything negative. We're just a part of promoting education here. And talking about cybersecurity, before we move into it, yeah. I think this topic that we've just spoken about links interestingly to what just happened a few weeks ago sure. when a certain gent on Twitter by the name of Musa Kaula oh. had um, alleged stuff about me. And I sent him a tweet that yes. was warning him, Muguti, I'm going to sue you. Yes. But I never heard and went and sued him. I remember the story. And my remarks on this platform were even saying, he's a young guy. He's probably not even aware of the repercussions of what he's doing, what he's saying. Yeah. And sometimes, guys, we need to move carefully on these internet yes. streets. As much as we free, but we also need to be very careful to not break the law. Yes. So the interesting thing is two, three weeks ago, that happens. Mm. I almost sued him, I didn't. Sure. I was like, okay. And then two, three weeks later, a bigger fish, Mr. Trevor Manuel is sued me. <laughs> so it's, it's quite an interesting world that we're living in. Eh? Did Umusa ever get back to you? No, 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 he didn't. And he didn't apologize, but it's okay. Umusa, Umusa drops files. And uh, he's, I think he has become the go-to person on Twitter for Umkos. You know? And unfortunately, the country we live in I think a lot of his gossip is sort of true. So it gives him some credibility that when he drops files that are maybe not true, maybe not verified, people believe them without question. It would have been nice if he'd responded. Even to just say, Guti, hey, unfortunately, I heard this from someone else. And if Musa becomes a somebody, because he's also got a platform, they must come chill with us. But about Trevor Manuel, they must come chill and let's chat so that if you're going to make flops, be like, guys, so we're like, okay, I know Siago. So we'll know in future that every time we consume your content, there must be. So just put a warning. Guys, none of this is verified. It'll change the entire dynamic. But no, but everyone knows what Musa says. Guys, please know this stuff is not verified. I get it from sources. It's not something I know personally. It'll help if we all become teachable and we work together. Ama files must be dropped. That's how we're all going to get better. But it, you have to be strategic. You mustn't break the law. You mustn't unnecessarily lie about people. That's with, destructive. With that being said as well, uh, there's a very big culture all over the world of cloud chasing. Yes. Of, of getting um, engagements, followers, views, clicks, likes. Yes. Uh, based on either clickbait or now you, you, know, you, you, you write your topics when you put up your content. Or maybe based on a certain type of content that might just sure. raise controversy out there and people that's what they want because they know they're going to get a lot of engagement of a lot of views a lot of followers but i kind of feel as a human being and as a hrot man as well who's had to take some time and work on myself i've never always been like this i was once a youngster who was also out and about partying models parties champagnes fast cars <laughs> and just that type of life that i've lived 
but my life was on the edge. Um, and, and I've done a flop one, but over time, it's cut in a sample. We are cool and all moon to and over no, no, because in on the care, Kalia Vule, a show you how you are, and you grow, and then you look back at some of the things that you did in the past. You don't want to be that guy who regrets things that you did in the past because you're probably just spewing out negative energy against everybody. Mm. Remember, it might not be a DJ Spoo, a, a Trevor Manuel suing you, but it can just be the universe or what other people would call it, coming back and saying, you've caused so much damage on mm. so many families, on so many people, because you are spewing so much hate, not caring whose heart you're breaking, whose marriages you're breaking. You just don't care. You're just spewing out so much hate yeah. that over, over the years, it catches up with you. In the, in the future branch uh, discussion, so Kanye West organized black people that are decision makers in media to come together and say, it's Black History Month in America, which is in February. Let's start talking about a Black Future Month, where we're not just speaking about the past, we're speaking about what are we creating for the future. He mentioned that... Um, is it Larry... Uh, there was a gangster who's in prison. It's not Larry, Larry, is it Larry Hoover. Larry yeah. Hoover. Yeah. Larry Hoover got him and Drake to mend their beef at the time. And he mentions that just by doing that, Larry Hoover from prison, people can go and research Larry Hoover, getting Kanye and Drake to kill their beef. I think he saved lives. Mitch. Larry, Larry Hoover. Hoover. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he saved people's lives in the hood. What was he meaning by that? He meant Tupac and Biggie, the beef that they had. Many people that don't know them personally ended up having debates and fights and killing each other. So to what you're saying about the universe, which you might not be sued, you might not be asked to retract in a statement. The person that you're attacking on social media might have a fan or somewhere. It was like, no, Sugela, I pelus Buddha, I mean, I'm cooling, I'm not going to be taller. Watch out, it's not taller. Next thing, you're losing your life. And you are like, but guys, I was just sending... So, so we all have to be very, very careful. I've been asked many times with some of the content I post on my personal pages, are you not scared of, of something happening to you? And I normally laugh for various reasons. One of them being, I guess I'm not really scared of death. Another one being, look, I, I love my truth. Number three, because anything that I share is easily found on the internet. Um, people that know me personally know that I keep secrets. I, I don't say anything about anyone anyway. So if I say, yeah, you can't say, I'll be like, yeah, go on the internet now. Lending you show you is not something that I found somewhere in a corner. It's public knowledge. It's, it's public knowledge. You know what I mean? So, um, no, people have to be very careful. So, you know, it brings the topic to cybersecurity. And guys, we have to be careful. For those of us who've got um, some Bitcoin investments or Ethereum investments, let's put them on the ledger and let's get them offline. Go protect your crypto. And um, those of us that are on social media every day that are now using social media for banking, we're using our smartphones for banking. Literally, this has become our entire lives. Yes. So somebody can hack you just like these um, criminals who hacked me. Let me tell you guys how it happened. So how it happened, uh, Peño, is they hacked my Twitter account. Okay. Excuse me. How they hacked it was I think they hacked somebody else's verified Twitter account. Sure. Then they followed me. Okay. Somehow I followed that verified account. Okay. An overseas account. Sends a DM to my account. It's a verified account. It's got over 500,000 followers. Sure. I was like, oh, okay. Hola, this is somebody hola, from hola. overseas. Who's this? You know? Sends a message there. Says, we're from Twitter support. Sure. We see that you are spamming your followers. And this is on a Sunday, the day after a Saturday, where I retweet hashtag DJ Smooth Small Businesses on a sure. Saturday. I do know Vele, I, I retweet, sure. you know, over and over the whole day sure. uh, to try and help out small businesses. You guys do know some of you guys who, who follow my Twitter account over the past four years. I, I retweet small businesses every Saturday under the hashtag DJ Smooth. So when I got that message the following day that says, mm. if you don't respond within 24 hours, your account runs the risk of being not suspended, deleted, something like deleted. that. Deleted? Yeah, so the deleted part is the one that made Yaktu, me. So yeah. yeah. And then click here if you want to fix whatever, whatever. Ah, kangula babang bambe kon. Wa click! 500,000 followers, verified account, of course you click. Anya so, lampana, wutin click elin. 
These guys are so quick. Now got to click and say, sure. Isn't those hands like a phone in your cool? Because these guys know what to do next. Yes. What to do. So, anyways, they pretended to be Twitter support. Yeah. And they knew that after they hacked me and they take my account from me. Sure. Obviously, they change the password immediately. They mm. change the phone number, the email that is associated sure. with the account, and they know. Um, I've got a two-factor authentication, right? They wait, know wait, that please I, stop there. Two-factor. Yeah. Which means there's two steps to get into your account. To get into my account, sure. yes. So as much as we hack it, why? Sure. As much as we can kick it out, I can kick it out. Sure. I can kick it out. I can kick it out. I can kick it out. Sure. I can kick it out. I can kick it out. Sure. That's the second step. So, you know, what he did? I can kick it out. So, Ati. So, because by hacker a Twitter account and by any phone number that is linked to their account, sure. immediately they go to WhatsApp and a phone number. I am. They respond. They wait for me to send an email to Twitter complaining about what just happened, and then they come back to me with a WhatsApp. When they come back to me with a WhatsApp, when you look at that WhatsApp profile, sure. it's got that verification blue check. It's written Twitter support. You literally think, oh wow, okay, hey, but she's Twitter is not responding. Okay, you know? okay. And then I'm like, oh okay, cool. And this is like ten minutes later. Sure. Oh, lovely. Twitter has responded on WhatsApp. Say, sure. I'm explaining everything that happened sure. on WhatsApp. You know what these guys are saying? They say, before you do anything, we do know the behavior of scammers. They are probably right now trying to take the rest of your other social media accounts. Do us a favor. Mm. Go to your phone and for your two-factor authentication on your other accounts, sure. the codes that you're going to get, please give them to us so we make sure that we help you so they don't, they don't take them away. My name is Penny. At that time, yeah, la pana gomanya nyak. Boma TikTok, nyak boma. You know, I'm. Ah, man, yes. Go vugu pantsul. No, man. Go vugu pantsul. And this is almost when I sent all those codes. Go vugu pantsul. I've already written TikTok. Here's the sure. Go tango to me lanjega. Let's go. Then you might be as a young kid. Basically, I would have given, I would have handed over all my social media accounts to them. Your metaverse profile. Everything, bro. Everything. Your, your digital life. It just clicked with the man. Aban basa Twitter ngega ba yokuza ngamanya ma social media. Wavu pantsul. And then ngaba buza ngata man. Are you guys hackers or whatever? And then that's when they blocked me. Then they disappeared. So I've been going back and forth with Twitter. They respond to emails 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours later. It takes a while. And um, they hacked my account on the 8th of May. And now it's almost the end of May. My birthday was on Saturday, the 28th of May. Mm. I didn't have Twitter. I didn't get a chance to get in touch with my people on Twitter. So I'm just praying to God I'm going to get my account back. You know, it's been it's been around since 2011, bro. It's got over a million followers. Yeah. And just like the viral video of Will Smith um, saying to his wife, my social media is now my bread and butter. Yes. Losing a social media platform, that is like equivalent to losing money. I've got a client right now who's on standby. It is losing money. The client is on standby, wants to close the deal with me, but they want to know if I'm getting back my Twitter account because most of that campaign is going to run on Twitter. Mm. So I'm already starting to run the risk of losing the bag. So that's the importance of social media. So cyber security, ladies and gentlemen. Cyber security, your opinion? You know, I, um, I, I, I tweeted and I posted on my WhatsApp status that my phone has become my uh, Pakistani spaza container. Because I'm on this thing like a Pakistani the whole day. I'm Pakistani is in the container the whole day. <laughs> yeah. Naming la the whole day. In candy new gangani, like I'm selling goods. Yeah. To people, this this thing has become incredibly powerful. And you have your physical presence, and then you have your digi digital presence here. And some of us have learned ways to make some type of money via email, via social media. And we don't take this stuff seriously enough. I think people need to read up on it. People need to watch videos on cybersecurity. Um. And then just the life. Yes, then took pillar strategy if it's so important. Singing a shower and a two thing. Yeah. Which is having your phone taken out of your, <laughs> yeah. your pocket. My, I thought my brother would laugh at me at the time uh, when it happened to me. He was very sensitive and he said something which you, you linked to. He said, These guys have been doing this over and over. They've made so many mistakes. That's why they know they've made <laughs> being teachable. Yeah. They've learned that someone will ask, are you a scammer? So they're like, oh, okay. So they're like an algorithm. Yeah. And they're smart. Yeah. They know these people. So when you go out there into the world, even things, I've almost been um, scammed like a Yo. Ah, but this man, my God. So the lady I was with knew that I was into trucking at some point. She met some guy at a garage, fuel station. I don't know why she was even speaking to him. I met a guy, he says he moves coal, what's what you should meet with him. Sure. 
I meet with the guy, get the number. He takes me to a hotel. Must figure out that there's these two African foreign guys. <laughs> Ch chilling there, you know, when Kombisa a diamond. Yeah. We've got this diamond, it's worth two million or what. I'm like, hey, Machida, I just met you, Angnas. You know, long story short, they're like, they they leaving the country, they show me a paper, a Paluti SARS authentication, authentication for the what what. I have to go and meet some white guy who, who's a buyer. Saying as to an alum that I met, says I'm a Seros Bank, so an alum you should know he's got a jewelry shop. He works in Antwerp, white guy. You have one again, no tag. My Sultan and Unga Amla, Spetit Diamond, the two million. These guys gave it to us, Bang Asas. So Spetit Diamond, Lunga Amla's like, look, uh, the best price I can give you is maybe one million or so. Luckily, I'm saying, I'm like, there's no way in my list this easy. Says to these guys, these guys are like, we have to fly out today. Can, can you guys maybe give us maybe 100,000? Then you can make the 1 million, it's yours, it's fine. Lumchi does like, I'm like, I'm like, Baba, I mean, I'm not going to give these guys anything. No man, you 10,000, I'm like, Baba, I'm And I went and I told that story, and in telling the story, because I've watched, there's a great movie called Catch Me If You Can with yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio, which people should check out. There's a whole lot of other crime uh, Kaiser Sose, There's the usual also, suspects. You must also check out The Big Short. And The Big Short, yeah. amazing movie with the... Yeah. Uh, I forgot this guy's name, he's a great actor. Yeah. Um, My father, I shy a small yarn, a counterfeit, what what. So, and it protects you. Knowing how to... Someone has given you a paper. Because when you actually study the psychology of scammers, and you study them, they know that what are you looking for? Where's your website? What are you looking for? They want to see a pretty lady. They want to see pictures of you shoot him and nunga and to me. They want to see some of these guys about shy for my forex scams. Bazo hamba peshe ba shoot it home, but Vashelu Spuda. Mama Spuda's got a big house. Ba shooting a pan. So you have all these tick boxes. No, but Lum Chitu Pila that's how I was accused of being captured. No, but if he's working with this guy, that's the same psychology. And we are shy. So people have to be there out in the streets and we have to chat. Wow. The number of stories I've heard of ladies being scammed by guys. I'm going to get 50,000 in your account. At babe, can you please, hey, I've lost my water. I'm going to transfer it. I'm going to get 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 it. I'm just waiting for more money. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Just 10. I'm going to get it. Next thing. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. On Netflix. The psychology, mastering human psychology, that's the danger of it. You can either unlock a person's mind and allow them to be great people, or you colonize their minds and you completely, completely exploit and take from them. People must go and read up on cybersecurity, how to protect your phone, how to back up, where to back up. Uh, I'm a minimalist. I believe in living with very little. Try and move some of your photos, your videos onto clouds. Um, yeah, man, just try and protect yourself. I think it's fundamentally important because a social media account really becomes not like a bag and not like, it's literally money. It's literally money you're losing that could can go to feeding your daughter. Shout out to your daughter. A lot of people gave love to her. And shout out for me. I love intentional parenting. I love parents that put their kids on. That's how it's meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, but anyways, uh, cyber security is serious, man. And Hi, this mood. I, I hope you'll get your account back. Yeah, I'm, ho I'm, I'm hoping so too. But then I obviously worry also about the other people out there who just lose their last cash, their last money, their last savings because of all these different scams online. Guys, let's become careful and let's read up on cyber security and let's just find out different ways on how to protect ourselves. For instance, as I was talking about my social media security, I've got something called the two-factor authentication. Go read up on that. What is the 2FA? Just have different steps on how you can just protect not only your social media accounts, but just your presence online, your brand, your money online, your passwords, etc., etc. With that being said, we've had a couple of episodes. Um, I remember the one with Uput Andilem Kiltama. He was very open to say he's an anti-vaxxer. We spoke a bit about um, the Pfizer documents that came out uh, and the side effects, etc. We also had a chat to Sismandi Samashir. Yes. Um, excuse me. Talking about um, Big Pharma during yes. the COVID-19 lockdown. Sure. Now, recently, a South African company did scam. Yes. For the first time in their history of its existence. Sure. Did scam. Ph pharmaceutical company. Yes. 
They've got outlets all over the country. Got For the came. first time, Fetu, they've just hit over 30 billion in revenues. Now, I do know there's, a, there's an acquisition that just happened. Yeah. But 30 billion, bruh. So I also think um, it's got a lot to do as well with the times that we've just been in. Yeah. I just wanted us maybe to touch on it a little bit. I know that it's not Pfizer or it's not J&J, one of those companies. But it, it's quite interesting us as entrepreneurs to see a South African local pharmaceutical company mm. doing those numbers in terms of revenues. I'll be the most happiest man. The day Mufai shot 30 billion in revenue. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's sad. It's... Is it sad? If you're a shareholder at Discam, you, should be, you wouldn't even be here. You'd probably be in Greece somewhere or at Mythos. You'd probably be in Ibiza somewhere. So that's part of the sadness, right, uh, of capitalism for me. Uh, in one of our, epi- our previous episodes, I spoke about Pfizer also hit a record, uh, to, I think $26 billion within a quarter. That's $26 billion within one quarter, not even a year. I can only imagine even brands like Clamp O Clicks also probably saw bumper what what because people were paranoid. Yeah. The the sadness of it is um shout out to Om Kulun Singiza that have been here or Coco Dineo. Capitalism and how it's structured as an animal, in particular the, the healthcare aspect, which is sad for me, is they need you to be sick to make profit. They will not give you the cure. They will give you the management and they need you to keep coming back. And their management will also have side effects so that you keep coming back. So that, that makes me very, very custom, sad. A customer cured is a customer lost. Boom. Right? So um, shout out to Discam for making money. Shout out to their shareholders, <laughs> of course. But it's at the expense of uh, basic humanity to me. And that's what saddens me. Um, I'd like to have money, of course. Money allows you to do great things, allows you to give back. You can't pour from an empty cup, etc., etc. But there's a toxic aspect of how capitalism moves, especially when we don't have freedoms, which, which we lost during the lockdown, which even to this day, we still don't have them. They said our lockdown is done, but they still haven't removed some of the regulations. Our artists, our musicians are still not performing freely in packed stadiums and, and, and halls and whatever. And they're still trying to shove certain acts into the health act, uh, into the Health Act, and I hear now the World Health Organization is trying to get leaders around the world to come and sign over some of their sovereign, sovereignty, sovereignty so that they can basically control us. They've already voted. Jenga, we can't, we can't, tra- we're done. We're done bro. Of which I'm not but surprised. We've got a few more months that they've, they've voted um, in its favor for now. I mean, I've, I've told you, finalize, I think in November. I've told you that uh, even if they voted against and we all celebrate it, these guys know how to move. They'll get us to comply in some way. The vaccine in this country is not compulsory. Just so people know, there's no law that says you have to be vaccinated. But you can't, you can't leave this country, Unga Jovan. You can't work in certain companies, Unga Jovan. Certain schools, you can't work there, Unga Jovan. And, 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 and. So what does that tell you? And we've got your Human Rights Council, we've got your CCMAs, you've got your constitution. But in nothing. So, um, yeah, without getting political and bashing certain leaders that I don't like personally, um, it's just sad for me. But um, shout out to Discam, but uh, for me, it's, it's very sad. I'd rather we be celebrating that we had a bumper harvest, that our farmers are doing well. We've got more black farmers. And um, the reason I speak about Tukoko Tineo and Mkulun Tseng is, uh, you've mentioned as well, um, and to, to, to use natural herbs, which cure. And people need to understand that food is also medicine. If we ate right, if we had sunlight, if we were healthy, if we were with the people that we love, we'll be much healthier. But unfortunately, that doesn't make profit, sadly. Um, I know, as I've been saying, I haven't been um, on social media for quite some time, but I also have heard about the EFF March, yeah. the uh, embassy. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about that, and what is it about, <laughs> the French embassy? Yeah. <laughs> Without talking too much about it, so politics is politics and politics is a game. And it's a game of having the loudest voice and the voice that the people think they want to hear so that you can gain votes. Um, Julius Malim has been a great leader from ANC Youth League days to setting up the Economic Freedom Fighters. He's a man that's inspired me, so many other people as well. He is a politician and politics is politics and politics is a game. 
So what they've been doing or what they were doing is they were marching to the French embassy to, to get France to leave certain African countries. South Africa used to be a British colony. Some people still argue that it still is. Babu Mwele Tsimpegi uh, had said that we work for the British even to this day. Um, Uchulia Smalima is a leader at the African, is it the African Union or the Pan-African Court. He's a leader there. And he's, he's for removing the borders. And I think he's building himself up to be a leader, not just for South Africa, but for Africa as a whole. Yeah. Because you'd ask, EFF in Guinea, man, you're France, because we're not a Francophone country. We're an Anglo yeah. country. We were colonized by the British. But it's them trying to, I guess, stand in solidarity with our African brothers and sisters. There are African countries that to this day are still paying colonial tax to France. You know, so it's just saying, guys, please stop. Part of what he said, which I thought was a bit silly, but this is my opinion, was those countries must also remove French as an official language, you know, of which I don't think he said that we must remove English here. Um, but look, there's a lot of people that stand in solidarity with him. And because he's got the platform, um, you do with the platform what is best. Fighting for poor black South Africans is very important. Fighting for poor South Africans, regardless of race, is important. Fighting for South Africans, whether they're poor or not, is important. And for Mali, my case, he's also taken the fight to say, I will also fight for my African brothers and sisters, and maybe even all Africans in, in diaspora. In diaspora. Um, and if that's his thing, and he's going to use his vehicle of the EFF and the followers to do that, it's up to them. He's got followers. Um, for me, I think it's politics. Number two, I hate marching. I've said before, I hate grants because they destroy the mind. I hate the concept of marching. Uh, I posted a tweet saying the most powerful races in this country don't march. 8% white, 2.5% Asian. You won't see them toy toying. They, they fight intelligently and they get things done. And I'd like, especially black South Africans, to begin, carry on marching. It's your, it's your freedom of expression. It's how you, you get people to listen to you. But let's also start looking at the more strategic stuff. Let's start learning from the people that are dominating us, how to hit them in their soft spots so that we can get what we need. What so. Yeah, sorry, finish up. No, 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 I, it was just that. What is the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC? The United States Securities and Exchange Commission, abbreviated SEC, is an independent federal government regulatory agency responsible for protecting investors, maintaining fair and orderly functioning of the securities markets and facilitating capital formation. It was created by Congress in 1934 in the United States at the first federal regulator of securities markets. The SEC promotes full public disclosure, protects investors against fraudulent and manipulative practices in the market, and monitors corporate takeover actions in the United States. It also approves registration statements for book runners amongst underwriting firms. And then just the last part, generally issues of securities offered in the interstate commerce through the mail or on the internet must be registered with the SEC before they can be sold to investors, financial services firms, such as etc. 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 Yeah, I yeah. wanted to give you guys a bit of an idea as to what the SEC is. Now, the South, let me say, the country itself, South Africa, has been registered as an entity at the um, SEC in the United States. And an interesting thing, and, and the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because mm. I've seen you do a video on it on sure. all your social media platforms. Um, on South Africa being registered as an entity as, at the SEC. Obama Mwele Tsimbeki spoke about us. Yes. And then you did an interesting video on South Africa being registered at the SEC. What does that mean to a layman in the streets out there? I hope I remember all the content. Um, yeah, I made a lack of video. I liked it as well. Unpacking the Um, we actually don't have sovereignty. So that was the story. Yeah. That was the story. Um, a change that, I mean, I've been a hater for years. And what I've, what I've actually learned, and I think Trevor Noah has spoken about this, that prejudice doesn't hold up well against contact. Yeah. Um, there are people I criticize from a distance. You, you get, to, get to meet them, you get to engage with them, you get to understand their story. Just as people have come on to virtual cook and people are like, Haibu, this is actually a nice person. I actually think I like them. Um, I used to charge with Sizwe Lomo back in the day. He's become a, 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 a great brother of mine. 
we poke each other every now and then on Twitter. Uh, right coming here, bro. <laughs> I want to see you here very soon. It'll be really great. I've done an interview uh, with him. I think Newsroom Africa as well. Um, so Siswet did an interview. I don't know if it was at 702, 702. Because he's at KFM now. Yeah. But they were interviewing someone who works at Treasury to try and unpack this thing. You know, people can go and check it on, 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 on the internet. And the first thing is the SEC is the American version of what we used to call the FSB, the Financial Services Board, which looks after unit trusts, looks after insurance companies, companies that are listed. It's now called, it's, the, it's now called, it's now called the FCSA, I yeah. think. Um, but it's a regulatory body that looks after companies that deal with investments and insurance. So South Africa is listed, it's listed in America on the SEC as a, as a country. And apparently it's not the only one. There's a long list. People can find this online. And the reason it's there is because South Africa needs to be verified. Because South Africa borrows money from the rest of the world. And in the same way you and I are listed on a credit bureau. Smooth down my account. Countries also have to be vetted. Do you guys pay well? What are your finances looking like? And where can you be verified? By a country that just prints money. By America and the Federal Reserve. With nothing backing it up. Not even gold. Enough gold to back that money up. Financial wizardry. Ah, okay. So um, we listed there because apparently the Western world values the SEC as America. They value them highly. Yeah. Um, so when you're there and they say South Africa is a good shot, then your IMFs and your World Banks will be like, oh, okay, if the SEC says they're good to go, we invest. In the same way we speak about all Moody's and those guys who are ratings agencies. Our bonds... So a bond is uh, a loan. So you buy a bond from government, which is like an investment, but it's actually a loan to government to use for infrastructure development or ESCOM and whatever. And then the government promises to pay you back the interest on that bond. Our bonds sit in a country called Luxembourg. Apparently Luxembourg is the best at verifying bonds, taking care of them and whatever. These are all the right. things we don't know. It's in Europe. Yeah. So the Treasury facilitates all of these things. But sadly, when you listen to the interview, sees what it did. There's a lady that he did it with. I'm, I'm not sure of her name. The person that they interviewed who works at Treasury is a director. There's certain questions he couldn't answer. Basic ones. Asking things like, do, do we have a similar thing here in South Africa where other countries can also come and list and we also verify? Why do our bonds sit there? When can we change this? And, 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 and. For me, the colonization project, capitalism, the money system, what, what, it's controlled by a few elite people. And uh, we are a second-hand country. Johannesburg Stock Exchange is 40% foreign-owned. If you look at our biggest companies here, they're not even listed here. You look at the, the cash flows and how much money actually leaves this country. If, if I were to explain it in an easy way, South Africa is a glorified factory. We work in the mines for foreigners to benefit in the south of France or Monaco. We work in the farms so we can feed Abo China and other places, for example. And even when we used to have textiles and those things, we get paid relatively. One of my mentors told me something quite interesting. He said he was traveling to Amsterdam. And when he was in Amsterdam, they were speaking about game farms in South Africa and how game farms, their pricing when you go to the websites are in dollars yeah. because they attract foreigners. He was like, South Africa is so cheap because you guys price everything in rands instead of dollars. And once you can benchmark whatever service you're offering, you can be a musician, you can be an actor, but in dollars, you'll start understanding your worth. Yeah. And these guys come in here and comparatively, relatively, they pay us peanuts because they pay in rands. When they take our minerals, they price them at dollars, at a premium, for example. So we are a glorified factory in this country. The nice car you're driving, or Kokelama installment, the nice flat or townhouse you have, or Kokangai bond, the little life that you're enjoying, it's just to make you a modern day slave. But the people that are making the bulk of that money are people that are not here. It's fine as long as you're happy in your mind and you're free by all means. But unfortunately, the way the world is run, um, that's what South Africa is. So South Africa is not listed as a company, but it is listed as a country at the SEC in New York with a whole host of other countries, or Australia and other countries that people can go in and research. Beautiful, interesting information. Lots of work to be done for us to research and understand these things and have uh, more knowledge.
far as our country is concerned. Now, lastly, I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've, we've, we've come together. Yeah. And I wasn't going to touch on this topic, but I think we should because it touches on the narrative, especially of our black sisters. Sure. Or let me say the black woman. So rest in peace to the godfather, um, Kevin Samuels. Uh, what an interesting <laughs> figure. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what an interesting figure. I started following Kevin Samuels. Or let me say I started following the Menosphere space. Or let me say... I started going red pill on the Jeez. internet, I think, around... How deep does a rabbit hole go, Alice? Maybe around 20, 2015, 2016. Jeez. Going all the way this way, I started getting introduced into the manosphere. Mm. Going into this way, I started getting introduced to um, the alpha male platforms online. Started getting mm. introduced to the Kevin Samuels of this world, the Coach Greg Adams of this world. Mm. and. Their narrative is actually very interesting yeah. on the internet, as far as especially black men and black women are concerned. Sure. Why am I bringing that up? Because um, Kevin Samuels has been working on growing his social media presence for many years, for over a decade. And he just recently grew up just now during the lockdown. I think the first year of the lockdown was 2020. Yeah. And he just became a big, major figure. But a lot of his clips or snippets or videos mm. of the larger part of his show would go viral mm. just like you and i are doing a podcast right sure now. some people take some snippets and they post them whatever and they go viral and it's sorry, go i want to send a shout out uh, cooking with black on tiktok cooking with black i seen they've posted clips of us oh, thank I you so much Seriously. cooking with black please carry on oh thank you very much taking guys. snippets taking us to the world we appreciate it very very much oh we do we really appreciate it do more of it guys you're more than welcome to even monetize our content you, you, you're more than welcome it's okay <laughs> as long as we are out there we we'll also um would like to uh but to empower you guys in some sort of a form of way somehow sure. it means you guys are squatters so we appreciate <laughs> you for that um i even forgot my trend you were before. saying Woody people used to take clips yeah. of his podcasts and post them out there just yeah. like they do with us and then now that it's passed on a lot of people are saying why was this man celebrated after he passed sorry why was this man criticized and why did so many women mm. celebrate his death yes did other people understand his entire narrative what he was about yeah or was he really a vile man who was just out to be on the internet to speak bad about black women yeah your take and uh, once again rest in peace kevin samuels for those who don't know him go google him or go search for his videos on youtube Go check him out. He brings in a very interesting narrative around uh, especially black women and black men. Or let me say the modern day black woman and black men. Jeez, uh, rest in peace to, they call him the godfather, Kevin Samuels. Uh, before I give my opinions, uh, I just want to know, <laughs> and for our squatters to know, what is the Red Pill nation, community, what is the manosphere, according to you? I think I'd like to touch on that later. For now, I want you to go in okay. with Kevin Samuels. So okay. I'll so break, I, break it down a bit, but I think a lot of people sort of get the idea sure. of what the, the Red Pill space is. So um, I haven't watched a lot of Kevin Samuel's content. I was There's put on... Another movement, other guys call it MGTOW or something. Jeez, I haven't heard of it. MGTOW is men going their own way. Jeez! Hey, gang, you have a 2022. My brother was a huge fan of Kevin Samuels. Uh, another good friend of mine, Nusiabli Elanganga, also used to consume kevin samuel so they put me on um you sent a shout out to coach something i don't know him coach greg adams yeah. greg greg adams yeah coach greg adams yeah. uh jordan peterson yeah. it's been a great voice um in the world at large what's happened is there have been different waves and movements we've obviously got lgbtqi plus etc um we've had feminism become very important and powerful especially for women and women empowerment which has been very important Along with feminism came radical feminism and radical black feminism, which then started hinging on bashing men. We don't need men. We don't want you. Leave us alone, etc. And I think a lot of men felt like they were being oppressed and their voices were being drowned out. So some men started speaking out for men, of which Kevin Samuels became one of the key black figures. Because you, I don't know if Greg Adams is black or white. Yeah, he's black. He's black. But Jordan Peterson, for example, your Joe Rogans were white men. And it was refreshing to have a black man speak out for black men to say the things that black women don't want to hear you know um one of the things he did is he, he engaged a lot of black women 
and getting them to put up a mirror to themselves. So you want, in Dota Must, you want a guy who drives this car, who works at this job, whose body looks like this, tall, dark, and handsome. But then as soon as a guy says, you know, I, I think she must just, you know, if she's just healthy, she's just, ooh, who, who hurt you? Why are you so toxic? Because a woman must be celebrated however she looks, even if she's obese and unhealthy and whatever. A guy must be healthy because women will be like, hmm, that big guy, whatever. So Kevin Samuels was saying, put up a mirror. You're saying you're looking for a guy who's a 9 out of 10. Are you a 9 out of 10 as a woman? Where do you work? What's your value add? What do you bring to the table? And yes, a lot of women felt attacked because of his style and because he was pointing out women's flaws. You're overweight. But not only you're women, old. You know that he also started on guys. Sure, and calling men was, out. And he was the same. I don't want to say ruthless, but he was a frank, Con same, consistent. Consistent. Like yeah. Guys and with girls. Sure. And, and that's why he was appreciated. He, he, he poked and he was real and he was genuine. Um, and a lot of women grew to appreciate him because finally a black man is actually, or a man, is telling women how men actually think and how they see things. And it's also explaining to, let's say, me as a woman, why I'm actually struggling to get the men that I, that I claim to want. Why am I struggling? It's actually because I'm not a high-value woman, but I want a high-value man. So... He was a polarizing figure because of, of that. Gordon Jobang Nisho, men have felt like they need their narrative said out there. Um, we've got a lot of female, even in this country, female influencers, female celebrities that dominate and control the narrative for what's cool and what's hip and happening. And then a lot of men have criticized that when you look at the male role models in South Africa, a lot of them are either gay nothing wrong with being gay or they are what's called feminized which means they're straight but they soft they're like no pella we must change nappies is that the right word you can call it emasculated but i'll call it feminine in the sense that when you come and you're like no indoor they're like hey that's toxic no you must consider a woman so they're like you're not gay you're straight because gay and straight is a sexual preference but feminine is just your energy and how you so they felt like a lot of the celebrities and influencers are either gay or feminized from a male perspective so it's, it's killing the masculine and anyone who's masculine when a man stands up and speaks for himself like i don't like this or no my, my son mustn't cry for something petty to know you're being toxic you're doing this you're doing and, and men felt bashed chimamanda has spoken about how important it is for black women in particular africans to write their stories and tell their narrative to the world so that the world can see the so that the rest of the world can see the world from the perspective of a black woman and a black girl. And currently men, and in particular black men, feel like they are not being represented and their voices have been drowned out. I posted a stat, it's from a 2016 article, but professionals in this country, in South Africa, the lowest paid professionals in this country are black males, not black females. Not black women? No. Is it? Okay. White males are paid about 60,000 rand a month. Again, this is 2016 data. On average, 60,000. White females come second at about 17,000 rand a month. Black females would get something like um, 11,700, I think. And then black males, professionals, 9,000. So black men are like, here's the data showing you there's actually an attack against men. Meanwhile, and these are professional men. These are not street sweepers and other gents about Pandai. These are men that are corporate, that are teachers, that are whatever. And then women are still going to want e-wallets. Indoor Damas, where's your car? Where's your... Meanwhile, you guys are earning more than us, but I must Uber you. I must do this for you. Clearly, it feels like there's an agenda. White men, 60,000. The black men's at nine. And these people are fine. Their women earn less than them. So a white man can provide for his white woman because she earns 17, he earns 60. The black man must try and provide in a home where the woman is earning more than him. Yeah, well, so men have felt attacked and they just want voices. And again, um, I think Unota spoke about tribes. I don't know if it's cultural tribes or whatever it is. Your red pills, your manospheres and those things are just, you don't have to support them. You can actually disagree with them. But it's a group of men who are also just telling their story, giving their voice and saying, guys, we feel attacked. And we just want to speak out. And we don't think that everything you guys are saying is wrong. I mean, is right. An Afri Forum stands up for 
Afrikaans people that believe in Afrikaans culture, the bulk of which are white. However you feel about apartheid and Hendrik Verwoet and whatever, they are fighting for their beliefs and they exist and they're influential. LGBTQI, feminism. There are people that are fighting for their belief. The, the Jewish Board of Deputies, the Muslims have got their own associations. Men are like, we have been forgotten. And we appreciate voices like this because it's, it's refreshing to be like, it's not me, sis. Because I'm not shame. They're like, hey, so you let Kevin Samuels do the talking on your behalf so that Usis can be like, hey, actually, maybe I should become a high value woman. And he says with Kevin that he's, he's saved a lot of marriages and relationships with his brutal honesty and getting men and women to figure out what do you bring to the table and how can we build each other. That's my knowledge. Very interesting contribution, by the way. Thank you. Sure. I think you've just uh, nailed it on the head, even for somebody who didn't understand who Kevin Samuel, Kevin Samuel was sure. or what he stood for. But another interesting thing is you're speaking about him putting a mirror to a lot of his audiences, which were women. Mm. A lot of topics came up out of uh, a lot of the videos that he would do. But another very, very loud topic out of um, his many videos that he's done that has always just come out and it just keeps on coming out is the feminism, or let me say the feminist, uh, is it feminism movement? Okay. Or let me say the feminist movement. Sure. And how a lot of our sisters are actually not even aware that in how they're moving in their either middle 20s or late 20s or 30s it's definitely going to their future yeah their lives 10 years from today 15, yeah. 20 30 years from today 40 years from today mm. with their decisions that they're taking right now and some of the conversations that would come up with is there's this just there's this whole narrative in the black community that says i don't need a man yes and then he would challenge that and say which man would say he doesn't need a woman? And why would a woman say she doesn't need a man? Mm. She probably might say that right now, and she's probably doing even very well with a six-figure income um, annual job. Yeah. But they might not possess the same feelings yes. 10 years from today. Yes. Or 15 years from today. Yes. With the decisions that they're taking right now mm. around the uh, feminist movement. Without, without having to offend anybody out there who's a feminist, I'm very careful with my words. What is your contribution there around that narrative? Around <laughs> feminism and Kevin Samuel being able to play a mirror to a lot of our sisters and say, hey, with how you're moving right now, you might just get to regret it later. That's a question I gave But the way we are in the corner, sometimes people would say it's harsh. Hey, it's good. I'm going to say it's harsh. I'm going to say it's harsh. I'm going to say it's You want me to say these things so that I get bashed? Jeez. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll be the bad guy. I'll be the bad guy. Um, you know, I meet so many women now. So I have six children. I'd love to have more. 10 to 20, potentially. I get dragged for that as well. It's a conversation for another day. I meet a lot of elder women. Some late 30s, some early 40s, some mid 40s, etc. Desperate. Desperate to have children. Desperate. Because they made certain decisions in their youth, in the peak of their fertility. They made certain decisions which have led to them not having kids. Whether it was focusing on a career, being married to his son, or no nganga shadang or whatever. And one of the most fundamental reasons or, or responsibilities we have, which is to procreate and make sure that the human race keeps going on. Elon Musk is very big on people having kids. I think he's got seven or he's at eight and one passed away. He's big on having kids. It's fundamentally, whatever cool ideas we have, whatever cool ideas we have, we want to sell more fire, we want to push a veg on cook, we want to have money. If we're not making kids for the future, those things disappear. There's something called endangered species. There's something called uh, extinct, animals that are extinct. The, the colonizers, the British colonizers in, Ameri in Australia almost wiped out the Aborigines. So a group of people were almost extinct. If you're not having kids, there's something called negative. They are now a minority in Australia. They're a huge minority. Yeah. I don't know what the correct term is, but if you and your partner have two kids, you guys are just replacing each other, which means the population won't grow. If you guys have one child, it's negative growth. Oh. And there's countries like Italy and Japan, where people, even in China, where couples are forced to have one child, or for whatever but reason. just change that rule because they, they, apparently they are population is not growing big enough that big enough China, yeah. sure so if you're not having kids again i've said this before that your kids are meant to be your employees they're meant to be your extension they're meant to be etc etc so 
a lot of these women have huge regrets. And this is not about women. This is about Amachita as well. Amachita maning for some reason. Sebi asabu kuba nengan. Angna nyuga ang spani. Anfei tunglinde. Apela mle si lingan. Whatever. Luckily, men obviously can have kids. No mabena vos event. You know, but there are decisions that you make. Because they are going to be men if they aren't already. That won't be able to have kids. Because babi tagwa kakul. In their hate days of their fertility. Babi pema kakul funny things. Maybe taking drugs. Maybe the way they, they, they engage in sexual behaviors. They have STIs. Or they've got some something that they can't have kids anymore. So people have to be very careful in the decisions that they are making. Because they do affect you. That's the children. And that's working with nature and the biology. Biological clock. Then there's this thing of irreputation of which in your 20s, what we feminists do. So And now you're trying to change what to add, but people have written you off. You're no longer valuable. People don't have time for you. And even some people that are meant to be looking up to you, whatever, accept. You were making six figures. You went, you were like, I don't need a man. Now what? No, I don't know. Let's. Because when you're so anti. They hate being a man. I hate being a man. If women say they don't want men, now I wish I wasn't a man. No, no, be transgender. Now you've got a child that's looking at you and saying, I, I wish I had a dad. You had a dad. Your dad was great, but you were in an era where you thought it was cool to bash men. And now the men are not here. Or they may be sleeping with other races. Now you guys are begging other races to sleep with you and you've become second-hand used goods. You wanted to be a man. You also got STIs. Multiple abortions. And, and so I saw like, you're miserable, you're depressed. People have to consider these things because these are fundamentally important things. There's layers of life. And, and a very important layer is this real world we live in, who we are as people. And the fact that we have to come together as, as the genders and procreate and make life forces like animals. The other things, what clothing you're wearing, I want to be a minimalist, a penalist, I belong to this church, I want to make money, I want to live in this house. Those are all material things that have been added. There's fundamental things that are important there. So there's a huge danger. Sisu Mandi Samashiko was here speaking about feminism and womanism. And speak about how feminism into Abu Ngamla and womanism is for all darky. Because there's a there's a point where a white feminist and a black feminist won't be able to understand each other because of historical context and the struggles we have. I'm speaking now to our black sisters and I'm saying, do you know that in corporate you earn higher than your black men? That means you have responsibility, Siswam. You have a responsibility to identify with okay, so my daughter are struggling. Let me see if I can help them up as well. Because I know if I uplift a guy as a black woman, female CEO. He's going to go and feed other women and children. There's going to be, uh, there, there won't be women out there calling me a deadbeat because I got holy God or whatever. If I can fix the black man and if I can get him to see that he can work with a black woman, I've already done so much for the black nation. In particular, as a broken nation in this country. The whites are sort of fine. The coloreds have also got struggles. They're not as deep as black. The Indians are generally fine and the Asians, but the blacks are broken. And black women, our mothers, our sisters, we can't just bash you guys have a responsibility you're going to bash a man but you're going to be raising his son and he might grow up speaking to this guy and end up hating you when this is cool Ooh, men are trash you know what you guys do later on I saw it. and when I ask you your man my man's great your father Valentine's Day Men are doing the most that they can. But you went and you jumped on a train that ended up being destructive, not just for you, but all the young girls that were following your example. I'm not going to mention names. There are female celebrities in this country that with their platforms are being very destructive because they are influencing young girls to bash men and in particular to bash South African men. Ooh, black South African men. You, hi. Whenever something happens, yo, yas, pelamato, that's South Africa. We, we are nothing, not just in race, but even on the continent. Black South African men are seen as the scum. So what now? Now I have to be a billionaire first. What must I do? It's wrong. And women, if you are an intelligent black woman, understand that Siswam, this is your time to be a Lauren Hill, a Winnie Matigizel, and to rise up and to lead. And to be like, I think oh, Sisbamba Tugile, and I actually think Namato Tugile. I will lead both of them. And I'll tell him, daughter, I'm not mad. 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 I'm not mad.
Humble Sebenza, la bunga shalu taimina. Sis, stop bashing this guy. This is the father of your child. This is your husband. Msize. Kona na yazo ksiza ksas. Asiza na sakane sonke together because we are fighting external forces that thrive when we fight each other. When they took the black man out and sent him to the mines and the farms, they knew what they were doing. Because then women had to learn to do on their own, single mothers. And then they took our mothers and they made them mama maids and factory workers. Then they left the kids alone. And then the kids went to the schools. And then the kids now were being indoctrinated. I want to be, I want to speak good English like Penwell. You know, I think I want to get a white girlfriend because they understand, you know. All, all, all an agenda so that we can hate each other. And the fight is still on till today. And the fight is still on to this day. To break up the family unit. And just in closing, rest in peace to the Godfather, um, Kevin Samuels. If you didn't know him, go research some of his work. Go check out some of his videos. But he brought about very interesting subject matters that I think are beautiful, teachable moments as well. They create beautiful, interesting um, debates and dialogues and conversations. A conversation that needs to be had especially in our black community and as far as um those internet movements movements like abu miktao men going their own way i don't believe in such i do believe in the family unit as well i believe in the um the strength and boldness of the black man being a leader and um him together with his wife working together to build that family unit um because i believe we are stronger together united mm. as opposed to be apart and I know there are great women out there who make awesome mothers, who've raised some incredible boys, who've raised some incredible sisters out there, who um, have got every right to be proud of the incredible work they've done over their lifetime, of raising such kings and queens. But um, we still we still don't or we, we can't um, but in, um, take for granted the importance of that family unit. Mm. That's how I'm going to close it off for today power i'm happy amen hallelujah amen. good brother. to see you brother thank you so much buddha thank you for being my older brother thank you for being a mentor thank you for being a friend thank you for the opportunities that you've exposed me to thank you for allowing me to connect create the virtual mkuku to connect with the virtual squatters thank you to each and every one of you guys out there all the new subscribers all the people that like me <laughs> the people that criticize me because they want me to be better the people that recognize me in the streets, but I was like, Bonita, no Sbu. Guys, I've been a fan of Sbu for many years, uh, like a lot of you, and I'm honored to be here, and I'm honored again, Baton, because we're running a race, this life race. Sbu that took the Baton at some point, some of us are trying to help Sbu along this race so that you guys, we can give the Baton to you guys as well. Love you very much, and uh, I'm happy with this platform and what we've done today. Hallelujah. I love uh, the Black Pan too. We learn a lot from him and it's quite interesting what we're starting, what we've just started together with you guys. We are hardly on 12 episodes, guys. Imagine where we're going to be on 100 episodes. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very excited. But watch him cook. Watch him cook. <laughs> Sashi Squatter Camp. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for tuning in. This is The Hustler's Corner.